every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is
Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. power in the name of Jesus wherefore we have given a name above all names that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord let me come get my old saints he has risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ he is Lord He's a chain breaker. Well, if you stop by Sunday school, you'll notice how he called them hypocrites, those scribes and Pharisees, and some of them thought they was all that because they sat in Moses' seat, but he came and he broke every chain. Jesus was a chain breaker. He didn't do everything that they thought that he should do, but he, he would come back and say, it is written. Come on, talk to me if you can. How we do bless the Lord in this place, for he is worthy to be praised. Giving all the honor to those who made it out to the house of God just one more time. Well, I, I, I didn't come to be a chain breaker this morning, but I, I come to preach about a man named Jesus. In Pauline's epistle to the church at Ephesus, Ephesus chapter 4, beginning at verse number 11 Exodus I'm sorry Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 11 Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus Ephesians chapter 4 beginning at verse 11 we're
standing for the reading of God's holy word. Breathe on us now, breath of God. Fill us with life anew. That we must do what thou must do. And what thou lovest me must do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There you shall find these words. Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 4 beginning at verse number 11. Says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastor and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statue of the, of the fullness of Christ one more time and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statue of fullness of Christ and I just want to talk about for the next little while unity in the church Amen. unity in the church beloved as I attended the 105th Northeast Conference this week uh, all I could hear was people talk about unity impact coming together then on Thursday my Facebook page kept going off going off going off and going off because somebody had went back and like a video of last year's of Dr. Cook's annual address. And it was that same scripture that we find ourselves in this morning that Dr. Cook preached in Anderson, Alabama about unity in the body. Sadly, a year later, the church is still divided. Don't nobody want to talk to me. <clears throat> the church is divided because this group think they're better than that group and this group think they can't fellowship with this group but God is calling all of us to come together in unity. <clears throat> Y'all got time to hear my little story? Paul's whole purpose of writing this was to tell the church at Ephesus how the church should be ran. Now, when I first started preaching uh, some 18 years ago my chancellor at my school said Reverend you have no business preaching none of Paul's letter what we call the Pauline's epistle because those are pastoral epistles he said as a young preacher you need to stay within the four gospels or preach the Old Testament but now that I've got 18 years of experience and been pastoring for now 8 years as youth and senior pastor together I understood why he said stay away from Paul's letters <laughs> because Paul would get in trouble when he tried to tell folks how to act don't nobody want to talk to me Paul would get in a lot of trouble because nobody wanted to hear what Paul had to say now I want you to keep your Bibles open because I'm about to get ready to jump out in deep water and I told y'all in Bible study I can swim real good so if you can't swim just lift up your hands and I'll throw you a life jacket notice how in order for us to have unity in the church God gave us what is called the fivefold ministry okay you're looking at me because you don't know what the fivefold ministry is so let me show you the fivefold ministries is apostles, prophets, evangelists pastors and teachers that's what we call the fivefold ministry God gave us the fivefold ministry to build up the church 
Ah, uh, y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. He gave us in the New Testament, they were considered disciples until Jesus had died on the cross and got up early the third day morning. They went from disciples of Jesus Christ to apostles of Jesus Christ. Their job was to go out and tell everybody about a man that they walked with, about a man who they talked with, about a man who they see died on the cross, but early the third day morning got up with all power in his hands. I, I know we only talk about the 12 apostles but there's a 13th apostle by the name of Paul Paul said I really don't deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted Jesus but I saw him for myself y'all don't want to talk to me is there anybody here to know that Paul saw him for himself it was when that young deacon was getting stoned by the name of Stephen Paul when his name was Saul was one of the young fellows who held the coat and as he looked up he got a glimpse of Jesus and then as he's on the Damascus road he's walking with Jesus and when Jesus knocked him off the beast he said Lord what does I have to do with thee uh, you can't call him Lord if you don't know In the Old Testament, he gave us what is called prophets, forerunners, foretellers, uh, soothsayers, if you will. I know you think of Miss Cleo, but no, these prophets were better than Miss Cleo. Because if Miss Cleo had the power that she said, she would have saw her end had well, come before her end came. Y'all don't want to talk to me. So he gave apostles in the New Testament to go and tell people about Jesus in the Old Testament. He gave prophets. But now in this century that we in, the 19th century to the 21st century, he gives us evangelists. One who goes around and preaches uh, the good news of Jesus trying to convert non-believers to be believers those who go out to promote the Christian lifestyle that go around promote Christian value uh, he gives us evangelists but then notice if you still got your Bible open when it comes to pastor and teacher they go together uh, I knew y'all wasn't going to say amen this morning ah uh, the pastor and the teacher go hand in hand. The pastor is the minister that's over a congregation, but he also got to teach them about Jesus. Uh, uh, notice, out there it says, it says, he gave us these people for the what? Perfecting of the saints. So you cannot get where you're at unless you got a pastor, preacher, evangelist, apostle, or prophet. I uh, might get in trouble right here. Uh, he gave the fivefold ministry to bring unity in the church and to build up the church, not to tear it down. Uh, but the problem is some folks don't believe that God gave us these offers to build up the church. We want to run by boards. We want to run by auxiliary. No, it all starts with apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastor, and teacher. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I, I, I know, I know. It, it, is, it is our job to fulfill the ministry that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 28 when he told us to go ye therefore. To teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It is our job to come together as body of Christ. Let me give you my three points because y'all looking at me in that tone that I don't want you to look at me in. Just because we're unified don't mean that we're in different. Okay, 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 okay. Because y'all are still looking at me, so let me come get you. Uh, uh, uh. When you go to your J-O-B, you got a supervisor that you got to follow what they put out there for you. You may not do it like your supervisor would do it, but you got to do it because your supervisor told you to do it. Come here. In the body of Christ, we are many members, but we're one body. And if the toe start hurting, the whole body feels it. Come on. Uh, you you want to know what will bring a grown man down to his knees if he stump his pinky toe or if he get a toothache? That'll mess you all up. Uh, 
because y'all looking at me. Maybe, maybe you ain't never stumped your toe in the middle of the night. You hit that toe, and before you know it, you'll be saying some explicative that you ain't never knew that you knew because your toe is hurting, and you will start hopping, holding that toe because the toe is hurting, and that's the problem of the church. We're not holding what's hurting. When somebody is hurting, we need to go put our arms around them, stop talking about them, and let them know that we in this thing together. And because we in this thing together, when you hurt, I hurt. Oh, come on, talk to me if you can. I had to tell somebody the other day, you need to stop, you need to stop gloating when they talk about other folks because your day coming. The same lies you put out on somebody else, they coming right back to you. The same day you gossip about somebody else, what goes around, baby, come. And I learned a long time ago, you going to reap what you sow. Be not deceived. God is not mine. So whatever you sow, you going to reap. Come on, talk to me if you can. It tells us that we need the fivefold ministry to be equipped for the perfecting that, that word perfecting means for the complete uh, nobody is perfect but we're striving daily for perfection uh, you may slip up today uh, but you get yourself right back up Stop wallowing because you messed up. All have sinned. But you want to say, y'all, no, nah, you sin too. And come short of God's glory. But because he loved you so much, he let you get right back up. Three, three points and I'm out of here. Point number one, in order for Mount Hermon to be that church God wants him to be, we got to be unified in the faith. We have to have the faith that God wants us to have. I, I know, I know anytime we say faith, you want to jump to Hebrews 11 and 1 now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things and not seen. Yes, that is true, but your faith got to go further than what you hope. Your faith is taking the step and God going to meet you right there. Faith is, I don't see it, but I know God showed me, but one day I'm going to get there. Come on, talk to me if you can. Come on, sometimes you don't see it yet, but give it some time. God will start opening up your mind. A lot of folks are walking around here blind because your eyes are still closed. Can I, can I, can I show you? Can I show you? Can I show you? Can I show you? Folks, uh, when y'all was building that life center people didn't see it yet all they saw was dirt and every time they come around they see a fence see more dirt then they start seeing trash from them opening up their materials and leaving it on the ground but every day the vision started coming to pass y'all I wish y'all would talk to me I don't know where you at in your faith but just keep on getting up day after day, morning after morning and watch God make it come to pass how do you know? By faith I'm going to get there because uh, 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 y'all still looking at me, Romans chapter 1 verse number 17 says for there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So every day God is going to reveal something to you, but you got to be justified and able to live in the faith. Okay, because y'all still looking at me, so let me come get you. Uh, my, my Navy SEALs will catch this one real quick. Faith is the substance. Where we get the word submarine which means a submarine goes under water. Uh, so faith being the substance of things hoped for, I don't see it, but it's something I'm standing on. Uh, you don't see it yet, but my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh. All of 
Brother Grounds is singing saying, faith says that, that when you got it, you come together. Even though I don't see it day by day, morning by morning, new mercies I see because faith helps me. Oh, y'all still looking at me. James 1 and 3 says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Uh, which means if we're going to be together in faith, we got to have some patience because some folks going to get on your nerves. Uh, some folks are going to try you, but you got to have patience. Uh, I told somebody, I ain't fighting with nobody in 2018. Uh, my, 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 new, my new attitude is just like this cat laying on the concrete watching a dog bark at him and don't even feel, feel like he's in threat because he's resting in the arms of a Jesus. I wish y'all talked to me. Uh, you got to have that attitude. Uh, do what you're going to do. I'm going to do it my way. Y'all still looking at me because, because your faith only gets stronger when you go through trials. Uh, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't fell off the bandwagon a little bit. I ain't been to the gym uh, for weeks. Uh, went to the doctor on Tuesday. Uh, gained 10 pounds. I'm like, uh-uh, that scale is a lie. But because uh, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, my my, my, my stomach, instead of getting better, it got weak. Uh, that's why I got a personal trainer that's going to put me back in shape. Uh, uh, but she makes me do some things I don't want to do. She makes me run when I want to rest. She only give me 15 seconds to go to the next thing. I need more than 15 seconds. Y'all don't want to talk to me. But no pain Come on, talk to me. And you wonder why God keeps sending you storm after storm, issues after issues. He's trying to get you where he wants you to be. Y'all still looking at me in that tone that I want y'all looking at me in, so let me come get you. I told you, uh, I love to iron. And every now and then the iron talks to me. Uh, plug the iron up. Walked away, went and got my dress shirts, put my dress shirts on the ironing board, put a little starch on it, and started ironing. But the iron didn't get hot. And I'm looking at myself like, okay, let's do it all over again. Put the iron on, got my dress shirt, put a little starch on it, went to the use the iron. Iron didn't work. I said, you forgot, you blew a fuse, go reset the circuit breaker. Come here. Sunday after Sunday, you don't blow a fuse, but you got to come to church to get reset. Y'all ain't talking to me because on Monday, you're going to face something. On Tuesday, you're going to go through something, but you need to come to Bible study on Wednesday to get a reset. On Thursday, your boss might get on your nerves. On Friday, your friends might get frickled. On Saturday, you may have some problems, but you got to come to church on Sunday to get a reset. How do you get a reset? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. My reset is as long as I can get to the house of God, everything going to be all right. Okay, because y'all still looking at me in that tone. I don't want you looking at me in. We got to be unified in the faith, which means we got to come together in one doctrine. Uh, uh, I know y'all thought I lost my mind because... Because I had y'all do the church covenant this Sunday. But guess what? You're going to do it next Sunday. You're going to do it another Sunday. On the whole month of July, we're going to read the church covenant because we got to be unified back to our doctrine where we came from. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Uh, somebody asked me, they said, being a young pastor, how do you get the baby boomers and the millenniums to come together? I said, well, you got to put enough in the trough that everybody gets some. 
Ain't nobody talking to me. So you may get a him, you may get a Tasha Cobbs, break every change, you may get a Kirk Franklin, but ain't nothing like Mississippi Mass Choir, Jesus keep me near the cross. And when you put enough on the plate that everybody gets some, you will have the baby boomers and the millennials worshiping the same God at the same time. Ain't nobody talking to me. The gospel message will never change, but the method got to change. So what you doing praise and worship? So what you got dancing going on? Ain't no dancing ever hurt nobody because if you really think about it, let the right song come on, you'll cut a step. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And, and I'm bold enough to tell you that I was at the airport. I was at the airport around some of my members and the right song came over the radio at the airport. Pastor or no pastor, I started singing. Come on, talk to me if you can. Because it's in you. It's going to come out. Y'all still looking at me? So let me come get you. Got to be unified in the faith. But secondly, you got to be unified in the family. Huh. Family. All the descendants of a common ancestor. We all got Father Abraham as our descendant. As our ancestor. We may not have the same mama, but all of us in here ought to have the same daddy. I, I said we ought to have the same daddy. That's why we say Abba, which means father. In other words, when you when you pray at night, you call him Jesus, and I call him Jesus too. But you don't end it and say our father, our daddy, which is in heaven. Y'all still looking at me in that tone that I don't want you to look at me in. Because we are unified as family, we got to come together as family outside these four walls. Uh, y'all still looking at me in that tone that I want y'all to look at me in. So let, let me tell you about my family. My family, some of my family members are messy just like y'all. Huh. I, I, I told y'all, I told y'all, I'm, I'm the nephew that got keys to everybody's house. Uh, I just went home for my cousin's graduation party. So, my my best cousin on certain days <laughs> called me and said, "Are you coming home?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "I want to run something by you before I run it by the family." I said, "Okay." Told me, told him how to do it. Let me tell you how it went. My grandmama taught us to be hospitable to everybody, to love everybody, now, even, though, even though we always don't do it. My best friend uh, is a female. Her best friend is a male. Because you got, fam you got messy family members just like you got messy church folks. They think that her best friend is her man. Not so. Just like <clears throat> women don't hang out with women because women messy, men don't hang out with a lot of men because men messy earth. Ain't nobody talking to me. So, so she said, she said, she said, I want to bring my boyfriend, but everybody thinks so and so is my man. I said, tell him to either bring his girlfriend or ride with me. So when she came in with a new person and he showed up, everybody started the whispering campaign. You know how y'all do. <clears throat> and so me being me, I said, I said, I told y'all, they just best friends. This is her real man. I done snuck in your door. Stop assuming what you really don't know. All your, I, I'm talking about my family. Y'all just eavesdropping what I told my family. Because uh, when I show up with somebody, it may not be your color, your kin, or your kind, but it's who I got. Sometimes you got to talk to your family. Because folks are always trying to assume, but we got to remember what grandmama taught us. We got to come together as a family. And even in the church, I don't care who.
who don't like nobody, love covers a multitude of sin. I'm still in the text because he says that we need these leaders to help us grow together. And in order for us to grow together, we got to put away our differences and come together. Notice, notice, notice. You may be able to get the job done, but God didn't put you there. Okay, okay, okay. Let me talk to people that's in, in management that got people working under them that, that always say stuff like this. Uh, if I was you, I would do it this way. I wouldn't do it that way. Well, baby, you ain't me, so you don't know how God told me to do it. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk to me. Because Paul had to let the church at Ephesus know that God is going to give you some spiritual leaders to help you grow. If God didn't, if God didn't send you spiritual leaders, you would still be out there in the wilderness like the children of Israel. Israel, you'll still be wandering, you'll still be worshiping the wrong thing, and God is a jealous God, and he ain't gonna have nobody before him, so we got to come together as family, put differences aside, put your drama to the side, just because you don't like this person, God don't care, God says that love covers a multitude of sin, and the only way that you gonna know that you say, John, uh, I John chapter 5 says I have passed from death to life because I got love for the brethren and that's what God want to know do you got love for your brothers and sisters y'all still looking at me so let me come get you again you got your Bible open uh, come on verse number 12 for the perfecting of the what and for what for what so God gives us somebody to bring us together so that we can come together and do Christian work. Huh. Where there is unity, there is strength. But the problem is we're majoring in the minor and minoring in the major. The, the whole key important thing of, of, of Ephesians 4 and 4 uh, that's the key verse that there is one body one spirit and even as you are called and one hope of your calling which simply means this and if you miss it I gotta rewind it again just because you can do the job don't mean the job is yours uh, rewind just because you can do the job don't mean the job is yours. You got to let somebody else show their talent. You got to let somebody else show their skills. You got to let somebody else hit you to home plate because God wants us to come together as unity. Okay, okay, okay. I know y'all still looking at me, so let me come get you. There was a man in Kentucky who got fired from his job and he kept going to these people trying to give them a recipe. Went broke behind it, but he never gave up. Oh, we don't want you because we don't like how you cook. Oh, we don't want you because we don't like how you look. Oh, we don't like you because you're too young. But because he never gave up, that's why we got KFC. Y'all missed it. What if Henry Ford had given up a long time ago of making automobiles? We'd never have Lincoln. Come on, talk to me if you can. The whole thing is, I may not be where you at, but if we come together, we can do some things. Can I show you? Can I show you? Because y'all still looking at me and that tone that I don't want you to look at me in. Until we come together, we gonna be divided. Uh, here's Bible. While men slept, the enemy crept in. One more time. While we're sleeping, instead of coming together, the enemy is coming in and he's taking the church by a stronghold. Because ah, y'all still looking at me in that tone that I don't want you to look at me in. You got two great gospel artists that um, um, went crazy. Uh, one of them happens to have the same last name as me. She done went crazy. One preaching that hell is not real. They done went crazy. Because the enemy is sne sneaking in while we're asleep. Can I help you? 
That's why we need more people to step up to the plate to do the work of an evangelist. We need more people who don't mind telling somebody you're doing wrong. The problem is we don't want to do it because we say things like this. That ain't my child. I ain't dealing with them. Or these folks carry guns nowadays. It ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't what you say. It's how you say it. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to look up because they're in the room. They're in the room. I'm going to look up. Um, look up. The Lord told me to go out this door and come in the front of the church. So as I'm going out the door, look to my right, group of young people ain't walking towards the church, walking somewhere else. But I said, where y'all going? Said, we going for a walk. I said, walk yourself in that sanctuary. Walked out the door. And as they were walking back, they all wanted to hug, but I wouldn't hug them. Why you ain't going to hug us? Because y'all doing wrong. Come here. Love is telling them that they're wrong. And then punishing them to let them know that you love them. Huh, okay, because y'all really looking at me. Maybe, maybe y'all didn't grow up like me. I grew up in the era of stingy gourds, jelly house shoes. Fly swatters, or whatever that was close to her hand. Come on, talk to me. My grandmama had a good arm that before I could even turn the corner, I was already on the ground. Come here. Where is the family love at in the church that we care for one another that we don't want to see nobody go wrong? Where is the love that because somebody stood up for me, I'm going to stand up for you? I, I didn't come to shout you this morning. Come to challenge you to bring that unity back. Where, where's the unity in the faith that, 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 that we come together and we stand on the word of God? Where's the unity that, that, that I want everybody to be blessed like I'm blessed? Notice, I don't want you rich. I want you blessed because blessings go further than riches. Come on, talk to me. Because richness can't get you a bill of health. But when you bless, you can go to the doctor, have a clean report. When you bless, you can go pay your bills on time. When you bless, come on, talk to me. Okay? Is there anybody other than me that want to be blessed? So we got to be unified in the faith. Unified in the family. But lastly, we got to be unified in the Father. Because we all got the same Father, which is Jesus Christ, which is God. Uh, Y'all ready? Verse number 13, till we all come in what? Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. We got to learn how to come together in our faith. Uh, Sunday morning, the 11 o'clock hour is the most racist hour there is. Y'all don't want to talk to me. We go to work together. We go to school together. And sometimes we even play together. But we can't worship together. But God wants us to be Unified. He wants us to come together as the perfect church. Ah, uh, you gonna be surprised who ain't going to heaven and who is going to heaven. Can can I can I tell you? It's, it's gonna be some folks that don't even look like you. That don't even call the same name that you call. That's gonna be over there on the other side. But as long as we're down here, we are to show the same love that when we get over there, down here. Y'all still looking at me like, 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 like you don't understand. Let me come and get you. We are to practice down here how we're going to act over there. Okay, okay, okay. Um, 
mighty clouds of joy. This is just a rehearsal till we get to heaven. We're going to really sing. But you ain't singing down here. So how you going to sing over there? You over here talking about your mansion going to be bigger than my mansion over there when you ain't even doing the work that God told you to do so you can get a mansion. You over here talking about the clothes that you're trying to wear down here and talking about my clothes over there going to be better than my clothes over here, but yet you ain't giving God your all down here, so he ain't going to give you nothing over there. Y'all still looking at me. You over here talking about how saved, sanctified you is down here, but when he get over there, he going to say, depart from me. Ah, Johnson, they don't want to talk to you, ah, so let me come get you one more time. How you treat me down here is an indication of how you feel about yourself. Rewind. How you treat one another down here is an indication of how you think about yourself. And because I think highly of myself and because I love myself, I got to love you. Uh, I'm out of here. And when we come together with the three F's of the faith, three F of the family, three F of the father, then God himself is going to get up. Uh, I need my Bible student to help me shop. Uh, every day, the world is getting sadder and sadder. Because God in the second person, which is Jesus, loves me so much, he's sitting next to his daddy with anticipation to get up. Daddy, I don't like what Lamar going through. I'm ready to go get him. But God is sitting cool, calm, and collected saying, not yet. Daddy, the church is in trouble. We got to go save him. Not yet. Daddy, children are getting taken away from their mothers and fathers. I got to go get them. Not yet. Well, Daddy, when is the time when preachers and deacons and choir members come together in unity? Then I get up. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Um, that's why Jesus told us that in this time we're going to have trials and tribulations we're going to go through some stuff but the end is not going to come until this gospel is preached to every nation and I need somebody that know what the gospel is that don't mind telling everybody there's a man named Jesus and he'll come see about you uh, anybody know Jesus the man from Galilee. Uh, uh, I ain't got it in me this morning. Sinus is acting up. Uh, Diggers Stiggers agree with me on this one. If you hung out with us this week, you don't want to go to hell. It was so hot up in there, fanning didn't even work. Uh, and that's an indication to let me know hell is real. And if you don't get it right, you ain't going to have no fan in hell. Can I give you the parable? And I'm going to my seat. There was a rich man, and there was a beggar by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus went to the rich man's house, just asking for some crumbs. Rich man let the dog eat the crumb, but wouldn't even let Lazarus get any of the crumb but the dog had compassion on Lazarus that the dog came and lit the wounds and the sores of Lazarus can I just pause and say you ain't got to be the rich man but you can be the dog to come see about somebody now lest you think I'm calling you a dog the Bible speaks of dogs in a way that says they are compassionate and they have love for humans. That's why they say a man's best friend is his dog. Uh, a man will cry over his dog getting killed but won't cry over anything else. 
because the bond between a man and his dog is thicker than any love. How do you know, Johnson? Because uh, after my mama died, uh, my mama would took care of my dog, and I had to make a decision either to let my dog be put to sleep or find my dog a home. And you know, Deacon Woody, I stayed an extra week in Michigan trying to find the right preparation for my dog. Now, I had a German Shepherd mix with a St. Bernard that stood three foot five and four feet long. So nobody wanted a dog like that. But thank God I had a kinsman redeemer in my uncle who took my dog home with him. Y'all missed it already. You ought to be happy that there is a God when nobody else wants you. He'll come see about you. Is there anybody here that know when friends turn their back on you, walk away? You got a God that'll come see about you. Can I ask you a question? Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you? Uh, any mountains uh, that seem hard to climb uh, I stand by here uh, to tell somebody uh, my God uh, specializes uh, and he can do uh, what no other power uh, Holy Ghost power can do uh, I can't leave y'all uh, with the story of Lazarus uh, where well, uh, the Bible says uh, that Lazarus died uh, and the rich man died to have I got any witness in here the Bible says the rich man went to hell but Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham have I got a witness the Bible says that the rich man looked up towards glory and said father Abraham send forth Lazarus that he may just dip uh, y'all ain't hear me uh, his finger uh, in some water uh, and just let a drip uh all on my tongue but you know what happened Abraham went and sent forth Lazarus well the rich man said send Lazarus to my brothers and tell them don't go this way and I stopped by here to tell somebody you don't want to go to hell you want to go over there where every day it be Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. Is there anybody here that want to go where I'm going? Johnson, where you going? I'm going where the wicked shall cease from troubling. I'm going where the Sabbath will have no end. I'm going where the S-U-N don't need a job because the S-O in is shining every day and I don't know how you gonna get there I heard somebody say get right church and let's go home somebody said they're going on the morning train somebody said they're going on the evening train but that's alright you go ahead and get on the train I heard somebody say they're going on the old ship of Zion I don't know about you but I don't need the morning train I don't need the old ship of Zion well I heard somebody say give me two wings to bet my face two wings to bet my feet two wings so I can fly away but the problem I got the next verse says if these wings shall fail me meet me with another pair but where I'm going I don't need no wings because just like Jesus got up with all power in his hands I'm going to fly without some wings I'm going to get up without wings how you gonna do it I'm gonna get up I'm gonna go higher 
Yeah, I, uh, is there anybody here that want to go where I go? I'm going where Jesus is. Is there anybody here that want to meet me on the other side? Yeah, is there anybody here that know everything going to be all right? How do you know it's going to be all right? One Friday on a hill called Calvary, he died. Didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Say, yeah. Oh, shucks. Say, yeah. Ain't he all right? Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Won't he hold your hand? Won't he guide your feet? Yeah. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? And I leave you alone. Slip your neighbor. Pull your neighbor up. And tell your neighbor. Now ain't the time to sit out on God. Now ain't the time to sit on your blessed assurance. Because if you knew, like I know, what the Lord has done for me, you'll be shouting. You'll be clapping. You'll be running. Yeah, yeah, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say, 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 say yeah, ain't he all right? Have you tried him? Won't he walk with you? Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Say yeah. Say yeah, 